would they cancel a popular show that everybody loves? <laughs> I'm the Eggman! Go! Go! Get you! <laughs> It was 1979. I was traveling the Yangtze in search of a Mongolian horsehair vest. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Good morning, my dearly beloved friends. It's Dan coming to you live from beautiful, beautiful, tropical, tropical Oklahoma, Illinois. Oh, man. Great to see you. I hope you're having a good day. We're starting it, right? We're starting the day off with a little bit of positive, a little bit of encouragement. We're going to read some scripture passages today, get a little bit of nourishment from God's Word, have some prayer time, ah, some fun stories, some, uh, again, some inspirational stories, try to bring a little bit of joy. I've noticed something. Um, now that I'm not, now that you're not allowed to, you really shouldn't touch your face. I have this incredible, overwhelming urge all the time. To touch. It feels like every part of my face now is uh, is itchy or scratchy, and I have this desire to touch my face. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you're not supposed to. <laughs> it's like it's like this human nature thing. You can't do this. Then I want to do it even more. Uh, we're a strange group, aren't we? I'm going to be here live Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central Time, for a while, just to try and get us over this hump, get us through the uh, these weird days that we're experiencing. You know, um, we have a little problem at our house. Um, this is how Nadia came home yesterday, and this is how Rachel was executing the stay-at-home order. That's what that's what she found lying on the Nadia found this Rachel just lying flat on her back on the floor <laughs> and, then and then there's uh, Lucy and Finley there with her and you might notice that um, they're having trouble still figuring out this social distancing issue <laughs> they haven't yet grasped the concept of social distancing. <laughs> Uh, well, that's bound to happen, right? You just, you never know. What's, what's my problem? Punks like you, that's my problem. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to like him. <laughs> White hair and those glasses. Um, okay, contest time. <laughs> if you can identify either of those two, those are characters from TV shows. One is a very old TV show. If you can identify those two characters... Uh, or either one of them, put the name of the TV character in the comment section. I, I'd like to know who, here, I'll play him again. I, I'd like to know who recognizes uh, either of those characters. What's my problem? Punks like you, that's my problem. I don't think I'm going to like him. <laughs> White hair and those glasses. Uh, um... Uh, either way, even if you don't have an answer to that question, uh, put a comment in the comment section if you're willing to do that. That kind of makes this a little bit more of a two-way communication rather than just me talking one way. And I'm try part of why I'm doing this live stream every morning is just to try to have some sense of connection since we're so disconnected uh, in the course of all of this uh, coronavirus stuff. And uh, if you can, if you're willing... I'm gonna, this is bold. This is very bold. I don't know who can do it, but if you could share this video, that helps it go a little bit wider. And uh, well, think about, it. pray about it. See if you see if you're bold enough to do that. I uh, I posted on April first. I know it's April second now. I posted on April first, two thousand ten. This little thought on my Facebook page. Um, it begins with a quote. It's a quote by. It's a book I was reading at the time by a guy named James Bryan Smith, and he wrote this: "Today is the tomorrow that we worried about yesterday." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was a clever way of putting it. Today is the tomorrow that we worried about yesterday. And by the way, did you notice that worrying about today? yesterday accomplished nothing productive, right? Yeah, <laughs> and that's. 
That's part of the reason why Jesus said this, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Deal with today. Handle today is the advice that Jesus gives us. And then, um, you know, the question comes up, well then, all right, well then what should we do today? Seek God's kingdom. This is what Jesus said. T today, deal with what is happening today and seek God's kingdom. In other words, seek to do God's will. Seek to live the way a, a citizen of God's kingdom lives. And uh, and then Jesus said, things, everything else is gonna, will fall into place the way it needs to. Seek God's kingdom. So, pretty cool. My friend Nancy, who's a very thoughtful person, uh, sent me some song lyrics again that I really liked. And I think she sent this based on something that I had read uh, a couple days ago, but it's still valid, and they're just, they're, they're beautiful words, um, and it's about God, so it says, you know, you, and it's you, God. You hold the reins on the sun and the moon, like horses driven by kings. You cover the mountains, the valleys below, with the breath of your mighty wings. All treasures of wisdom and things to be known are hidden inside of your hand. And in this fortunate turn of events, you ask me to be your friend. <sighs> you know what? God likes you. He loves you. He likes you, too. He likes you. That's a good thing. You know, the disciples at one time, Jesus told them, I, I, you guys are my friends. It's not, it wasn't just a master disciple, rabbi, student relationship. You guys are, you guys are my friends. There's a song, a, a chorus that we sing sometimes at church, uh, and the title, or, or some of the words of the song are, uh, say, I am a friend of God. I love that song. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. This is good news. For, hey, there, there's good things. There's, there are good and positive things. Yes, there's sadness. I have a good friend who's battling this, this COVID-19 right now, and I'm, I'm concerned about it. But there are still good things that are happening. We have to encourage each other with that. Uh, speaking of encouragement, where are we at? I'm doing my Ray Rayner routine here. Uh, let me read to you from the book of Psalms. That's going to be our scripture reading for today. I'm just jumping around and taking various uh, passages. I'm not really going in order here. I'm just finding things that are encouraging to me, things that are uplifting to me, and that's what I'm reading every Look, day. Why, why don't we just go to Final Jeopardy? Let's do it. So this is Psalm 25. I'm going to read the whole uh, the whole 25th. Am I? Yeah. I'm going to read the whole 25th chapter of Psalm. Not not real lengthy. Hang hang in there. And uh, no, no, no. Let me do the reading. You relax. Do whatever it is. You get keep getting ready for work. Whatever it is you're doing, I'll read. Free of charge, by the way. <laughs> O oh Lord, I give my life to you. Very interesting. I want to talk a little bit about that. I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do, let, do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced, but disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, O oh Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. Remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and unfailing love, which you have shown from long ages past. Do not, you know, some people uh, will occasionally say the God of the Old Testament was kind of a mean guy. We don't, we don't get much about grace and things like that until we hit the New Testament. No, we know about God's love. In the Old Testament, there, there we just there's a passage right there that I just read. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and unfailing love, which you've shown from long ages past. This is an Old Testament uh, passage. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love, for you are merciful, O Lord. Yeah. Old Testament, yeah. The Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. The Lord leads with unfailing love and faithfulness 
all who keep his covenant and obey his commands. For the honor of your name, O Lord, forgive my many, many sins. Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. They will live in prosperity and their children will inherit the land. The Lord is a friend. Ah, there it is again. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues me from the traps of my enemies. Turn to me and have mercy, for I'm alone and in deep distress. There's some people feeling that right now in our culture, around the world probably. Turn to me and have mercy, for I'm alone and in deep distress. My problems go from bad to worse. Oh, save me from them all. Feel my pain and see my trouble. Forgive all my sins. See how my enemy, uh, see how many enemies I have and how viciously they hate me. Protect me. Rescue my life from them. Do not let me be disgraced, for in you I take refuge. May integrity and honesty protect me, for I put my hope in you. O oh God, ransom Israel from all its troubles. I like that line about protect me too. Years ago, uh, I was dealing with some troubles that were going on in the church, and I read a line um, from A.W. Tozer, great preacher and, and theologian from days gone by, and and the line. I, I, this is an exact quote, but he but he says, if you defend yourself, if if you're going to get up there and defend, then then that's who you have for your defense, you. He said, but if you let God defend you, then you have the creator and Lord of the universe as your defender. Which one works better? <laughs> so I was inclined, I just, even just recently, I got some, a message from someone and I was inclined to defend myself. Let God be your defender. That'll be better. That'll be better for you. I know you're going to come up with exceptions, but what about this? And what about that? I, I understand there's exceptions, but, uh, in a general sense, <laughs> let God, uh, a couple things I want to point out from that passage. Verse one, um, Lord, I give my life to you. I give, I give, I freely, I choose to give my life to you. See, here's the thing that's interesting about that. <laughs> Our lives belong to who? They belong to God. You didn't create yourself. God created us. You're not sustaining the universe in your existence. That's what we're dependent on God for all of that. Without him, we would be not, we're completely, I know we, we have trouble seeing it this way sometimes because it doesn't feel this way sometimes in the living of life, but we're completely dependent upon him. So when we offer our lives to God for his purposes, in a way, <laughs> in a way, what we're doing is we're giving back to God what he already owns in the first place. <laughs> we think we're doing him a favor. Hey, you know, it's like if somebody took $20 out of my wallet and then say, hey, hey let me tell you something. Here's that 20 bucks. It's mine in the first place. This life that I give back to God, it's God's. He created me. Um and again, it feels to us, I understand, Believe, boy, do I understand this. Please, please know, I get it. It feels like this is my life. This is me. I'm the master of my existence and my life. That's what it feels like that, to me too. But we were created actually for the Lord. <laughs> I know some of us got to try and, and just get our heads around that and wrestle with that a little bit, but this is the truth. This is the truth of Scripture. We were created for the Lord and for His purposes. We were actually created to give Him glory. To give Him glory. That's that's one of the primary reasons why we exist. I know you guys think about that a little bit. Wrestle with it. This this would be, this is a shift in thinking for some of us. I know, but as we grow to understand who God really is, we understand then, as we know, as we grow and get to know Him better, we understand that He is good and He's right, and it's proper for us to be willing to live our lives this way, to live our lives for Him, and for His purposes. And then there's uh, another verse that I wanted to just sort of highlight a little bit. It says in verse 5, to God, God, lead me by your truth and teach me. Lead me by your truth and teach me. God's truth actually guides us and teaches us. How does God's truth 
guide us and teach us? Well, for example, it helps us to know right from wrong. You want some guidance in life? Knowing right and wrong would be a very big deal. Well, God's truth helps us discern, helps us know the difference between right and wrong. That's giving us guidance. God's truth uh, helps us understand, for example, through the life of Jesus, it helps us understand how to live how to respond in this situation or that's how, like how would Jesus handle this situation God's truth as provided in his word helps us know how to answer that question again it's it's giving us guidance it teaches us for uh, for example God's truth how does it teach us it teaches us about the nature of God the characteristics of God who God is it teaches us how God has provided salvation and eternity to us so God's truth guides us and teaches us. It's a very good thing. You know, the Psalms, this Psalm in particular, but others, uh, among other things, it's helping, it's, it really is just helping us to remember these truths, and it's helping us to appreciate these truths about God, and, and really about us and our relationship to God. Wonderful. It's phenomenal. Fantastic. Hey, um, scripture it, it nourishes us spiritually. I hope this is good for you. I hope this is nourishing your soul today. There's, uh, there's good news that's going on in the world, and people send me some good news stories, and I just like to share those sometimes. And uh, if, you, if you think of it, tag me on Facebook or wherever it is. Here's one that I came across uh, yesterday. Actually, a, a couple of people sent me this one. Um, a son used a bucket truck. You know those trucks where it's got a long arm and there's a bucket at the end and a, and a person can, can go up and work on, you know, like uh, electrical lines and things like that, a bucket truck. He used a, bu a bucket truck to visit his mom who was on the third floor of an assisted living home. Uh, so it says this, uh, an Ohio arborist, I guess that's a guy who works on trees and, and takes trees down and things like that, an Ohio arborist, <laughs> see how little I actually know, with a bucket truck is making a strong entry for Son of the Year Award. Charlie Adams hasn't been able to visit his mom, Julie, at her Ohio assisted living home because of coronavirus restrictions. So he came up with a clever way to visit her without violating social distancing rules. Uh, Adams owns a tree preservation company, and like any tree service business, he has a truck with a bucket attached to an adjustable boom for trimming hard-to-reach branches. Again, this can reach way, way up there. The truck's boom is tall enough to reach his 80-year-old mom's third-floor window. So he drove over for a visit. He said he checked with Windsor Estates, assisted living, before he came over. They thought, and they said, yeah, neat idea. They, they, they said, go ahead. The staff is taking great care of his mom, and he appreciates everything they're doing to keep the residents safe. But he said, it's just, you know, it's been tough for everyone. Quoting, uh, quoting this uh, fellow, Charlie, her spirits, his mom, her spirits were kind of down because she's used to being able to get out, go places, do things. So I just had the idea that I'd bring the bucket truck over. I called her, told her to come look out the window, and there I was. <laughs> they chatted about family for five or ten minutes, and he asked if she wanted any books or movies to entertain herself. Um, Adam said his wife, Corey, was on the ground with their dogs because mom likes to see the dogs. You know that. I would want to see them too. His wife took photographs of the, vi of the visit, which went viral when his uncle posted them on Facebook. Adam says he usually takes his mom out to eat twice a week, but they've just had to keep in, truck through phone, uh, keep in touch through phone calls and text. She doesn't own a computer, isn't on Facebook, but this new viral attention is keeping her busy. And uh, there's actually a picture of this fellow at this uh, assisted living place with his bucket truck. I know some of you are listening to this and not watching, but if you're watching, you can see there's the place, there's the bucket truck. And uh, that must be Charlie right there, visiting mom. <laughs> God bless him. Hey, you know what? Where there's a will, there's a way. We're going to figure out a way to still keep in touch and, and love each other and all of that kind of thing. Um, 
I've got one here that was sent to me. This was sent to me by several people. And uh, it's just sort of one of those, hey, there's good things happening. And it kind of lists some of the good things that are going on. So um, Carnival Cruise Line told, told Trump, the, you know, the big uh, cruise ship line, we can match those big Navy hospital ships with some fully staffed cruise ships. And they're offering that to help. GM and Ford said, hold our cars, hold our cars, watch this. We can make ventilators where we were making cars by next week. Construction company said, here are some masks for the medical staff and doctors. Restaurants and schools said, we've got kitchens and staff. We can feed the kids. NHL and NBA players are writing checks to pay the arena staff during postponed seasons. Been hearing about that, right? Terrific. Churches are holding online services and taking care of their members and community. Um, where am I? <laughs> oh, women and children. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm completely lost, but actually that's nothing new. You're just seeing and experiencing me in my lost uh, in my lost condition. Women and children are making homemade masks and handing out snacks to truckers. Breweries are making sanitizer out of the leftover ingredients. We thought we couldn't live without baseball, hockey, and NASCAR or going to beaches, restaurants, or a bar. Instead, we're ordering takeout to help keep businesses alive. What they didn't count on was America saying, hold my beer, watch this. I think a, a Japanese admiral in the middle of the Pacific said it best in 1941. I think we have awakened a sleeping giant. Give us a little more time and we'll be doing much better. Encouragement. Stop listening to the hysterical words that are out there. We are one nation under God. God's got us and we've got this. Just a little pump you up. We're you know we're gonna make it through this kind of a kind of a talk there. Very nice. I got another story here, and um, I think my dear friend Kathy sent me this one. Kathy, who uh, we're recognizing now, <laughs> kind of like whether she wants it or not, she's like the executive producer of uh, of the uh, live stream. Um, this was originally posted by a woman named Pam Borman Gregorski, and she posted this. My mom passed away a few years ago, so my dad is doing this social distancing on his own. I'm going to show you a video in a, in a minute. Dad's pretty elderly. He's doing it on his own. The family surprised him with a drive-by visit tonight to cheer him up. So here, let me show you. I, I got a little bit of that video of the family comes out, and uh, they drive by, whoops, oh man, excuse me, technical difficulties. <laughs> They're driving by. Basically a parade of cars. I think these are all family members. Some of them are saying... These are some of his grandkids. So he's getting up and going out to the van. And they're giving him a bag of candy. <laughs> Holding signs. Dad, we miss you. Somebody's giving them something there, a pie or something like that. More grandkids. He says, I can't believe it. What do you think? <laughs> Look at the smile on that guy's face. You know what I think about when I see something like this? I, I think about really, in a way, how relatively easy it was to do that. I mean, how was that? that it took some coordinating of schedules and, and people had to get out and drive, but really, come on. That wasn't that, you get the gang together, we get in the car and we go and, and we drive by. It, it, it's, did you see the look on grandpa's face at the end there? 
The first time I saw this, I was actually kind of tearing up. Hey, friends, we can do these kinds of things. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but a little creativity. We can do things like this, and we can minister to others in ways like this. We're not completely, we're not completely prevented from loving and helping and serving. There's things we can do, and um, boy, little things like that. Like, like I said, at, at the end of the video, I don't, I don't know if you could see it well, but the, the smile on this fellow's face, man, it was, it was, it was beautiful. We, we can do that for others, and uh, what a great thing. What a terrific thing. <laughs> uh, let's love each other. Let's care for each other. Let's, uh, let's minister to each other. Um, this is a time, especially for those of us who are believers in Christ, this is a time for us um, to respond to a difficult situation the way that Jesus would call us to respond. We, we can do this. We can do this. You say, well, I'm a little scared, Dan. I, yeah, we're, we're all a little scared. That's all right. Um, there's courage that God will, if we will take the first step, there's courage that, give, that God will give us along the way. So... Um, Let's get out there and, and do that, my dearly beloved. I um, want to close with prayer. We have a guy in our church, a dear friend of mine, who is really struggling right now with this COVID-19, and I want to lift him up in prayer. I know probably, I, I don't know how many people are on here, 35, 40 folks, you, you folks probably know people too who are struggling who have this and we want to lift them up before God and uh, pray for his healing and um, this is definitely this is definitely a time for prayer uh, for all of us uh, for our nation for our world so I'm going to ask you uh, if you're driving please bow your head <laughs> and close your eyes no I'm kidding I'm kidding uh, Join me wherever you're at. If you can do this, if you can uh, pause or even just quiet yourself a little bit, uh, join me in a word of prayer. Lord, uh, we need you so much. And uh, that's always true. You're always the one who you're sustaining our very existence. But sometimes the situations of life, the circumstances of life just sort of reveal to us a little more clearly how much we need you. And so we look to you, Lord. Um, I'm praying for everybody who's watching or listening to this live stream and people who will listen to it later. I lift them before you. I think, Lord, uh, specifically and particularly about my dear friend, John. I pray for his healing. Lord Jesus, please bring healing to John. And I know, Lord, that everybody who's listening to me has someone in their life. And we, and, and I, I don't know all of them. You do. You know in in complete and total detail, every every person that is being thought about by those who are joining me in prayer right now. And so we lift all of them before you. We pray for healing. We pray that you would give wisdom and, uh, and insight to these wonderful medical professionals who are uh, on the front lines dealing with this. Um, keep them safe too, Lord. All the people who are working in grocery stores and truck drivers and and just people who are service men out there um, uh, serving and and working on things mechanics that are still working keep them safe lord as they're keeping us in, in a position where we can still function um lord jesus please bring a swift end to this issue to this crisis that we're dealing with I'm, we're, we're, we're asking you, Lord, we're begging you, and um, we know that, uh, that you love us. We're praying these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, we're going to get through it. Uh, it's just, it's going to take a little bit longer still, so uh, we'll do this together. I, I appreciate so much you coming and being here with me every morning. I, I, some of you say this is a real blessing. Thank you. It's a blessing to me too. Again, put comments down in the comment field. It, it gives me a little bit more of a sense of a, of a two-way connection here. Hey, don't forget, live, love, 
laugh, and leave the fear and the worry behind. God is still on the throne. God bless you, my dearly, dearly beloved. <laughs>